Good evening, Salaam Alaikum, and welcome to the eighth edition of the vir virtual Big B Meetup. Uh, Big B Meetup is a community initiative founded in 2018 in Qatar. It is dedicated to my mother, the late Auroliana Josephine, and inspired by the people of Qatar, both local and expatriate. It aims to inform, to inspire, to educate, and bring communities together. This is our eighth edition of the virtual Big B Meetup, themed on how people are coping with COVID and beyond. I would like to thank our community partners, Qatar Red Crescent, Agbiz, Wahab Food Heroes, Batil Cafe, Qatar Living, Marhaba Information Guide, Olive Radio, and I Love Qatar. Don't we all? So this, this uh, edition of the virtual Big B Meetup is dedicated to World Environment Day. And with us, I have three of my friends, actually. I can call them my friends. Two are doctors, and one's a green princess. That's what I call her. So ladies and gentlemen, this is we have with us Aisha al -Madid, Dr. Farhan Circle, and Dr. Thierry Lissales. I hope I pronounced that properly, Mr. Frenchman. Almost. <laughs> Almost. OK, great. So good evening once again, and welcome to Big B Meetup, virtual Big B Meetup. Uh, before we continue, I'd like to play you a short video that I have uh, I've compiled uh, in honor of World Environment Day. So give me a second and let me do that for you. And um, there goes, that's it, and yeah. On the occasion of Environmental Day, I'd like to mention the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, any plants, any plant, and a human being or an animal is of it. He would be rewarded as if he had given God much in charity. This is from Ahir Bukhari, Dr. Saif al Hajri. Chairman of Friend of Nature. I am Carlos Fernandez, the ambassador of Argentina to the state of Qatar. And I'm very happy to greet all of you in this uh, World Environment Day, an issue which is very important for humanity, for my country, and an issue we work together with Qatar. <laughs> My name is Ashlam, I'm from Great I have a message for you according to World Environment Day, that is true to But we want to do that every day is World Environment Day. We need to try step by step to change our habits or that thing, to switch our habits. For example, to use the bags and add them from the class. Try our best to minimize our gaps and also reduce our food waste. Cook as much as we want uh, for our family members and also to help our vegetables that we can eat for another day. I hope you're doing very well. I hope you're, I hope you're staying safe and protected at home. And I hope that everyone will have a great day. World Environment Day is time different because we're going to make it for a whole year, not only a one day. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. World Environment Day and World Ocean Day is around the corner. And I want to show you something. I want you to see right there behind me what plastic pollution does to our environment. There's a lot of things we can do to help with these issues, but if there's one thing, one thing only that we can do, if you expose your plastic properly, expose your face mask properly. That's what we can keep covering. That's it. Okay. Just give me a moment. My message for a mode of vie plus durable is to simply be responsible, manger local, supporter the savoir-faire local, and to be kind. Et troisièmement, apprendre un maximum de techniques qui renforcent notre résilience. Merci. Je plains. Assalamu alaikum. Ma'am Hamad Farah Sawedi, 
architect and designer. I hope that you guys are all keeping safe during this quarantine period and have a good day. It's always good to be aware of our environment and how to also take care of it during this time. And one of the most crucial methods is to reduce the use of plastic bottles and containers and start using reusable and biodegradable friendly ones instead. You can all see beautiful bottles behind me. They're all hard work done by me on other bottles, on useless bottles to otherwise be dumped into the dustbin. So, as you can see, creativity is limitless. And so, reduce, reuse, and recreate with your creativity to leave a better world for us, the future generations. Thank you. My message for you all today is this. Almost everything that you look around you, at your home, at your, in your office, is possible to be repurposed. Repurposing is ever more needed at a time like this. So look around, be creative, and repurpose things. Ciao for now. It's world environment, but this year it's a bit different, isn't it? Because nature has some other plans and and here we are in a standstill. So let's rethink and reevaluate about it. And how can we make the change? Let's stop thinking that Earth belongs to all of us and somebody else might save the planet. It's the other way around. We belong to Mother Earth and it's our responsibility to save the planet. So this environment, let's all take a pledge to make small changes in our life for a sustainable planet. Hi, I'm Maria Manager. One of the most important things to remember when you're trying to live a more sustainable lifestyle is to not get too overwhelmed with trying to be perfect about it. You start small, do what you can, and go down. The environment is where we all need. We're all having mutual interest. It is the one thing all of us share. Let's perfect it and save our one plan. Together today, we celebrate the World Environment Day. Katina, Bye. So you heard them? Reduce, reuse, recycle. And while you're at it, upside down, one event, happy world, world. So guys, that was a little cameo from everybody, uh, the green ambassadors, I call them. And let me get let me get my friend back. Okay, hang on. Hang on, guys. <laughs> cool, that was fun. The last part too. <laughs> well, you you learn something new every day, don't you? So guys, uh, let me come back to, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, the short video that we had different people from different backgrounds, from children yeah. to adults, talk about sustainability, about World Environment Day, because we, Mother Earth needs us, you know, now more than ever. She's taking a break right now. She needs this break, but she's going to be back because we are going to be back. Hopefully we don't start littering again. So coming back, let's let's go to uh, the Green Princess, what I call, uh, who I named the Green Princess, uh, Miss Aisha Al Mahdi. And Aisha, can you give us your story on on being a Green Princess? Thank you so much, Bosco, and thank you for having me. Uh, I wish everyone is uh, safe and healthy in their homes, and I hope as soon as possible we get back to our normal life and we do this event uh, and we can see everyone. So uh, I started Green of Future in 2018, uh, in October. It was, uh, we had an, um, a practice, uh, like workshops to, to do a community service. Uh, as, an, as a youth, uh, we were thinking about something to do to the environment. Uh, and we focused on plastic, since plastic is a uh, harm for the environment and many people, uh, they're not aware about uh, the dangers of the plastic. Uh, so we did a lot of activities. We did uh, um, an exhibition in Katara to let people know more about the factories, the reusable, uh, I mean, the eco-friendly packaging that are being here in Qatar available and also other businesses that they are having eco products. Uh, 
Um, I, we try as much as we can to encourage people to switch from a plastic uh, items to a reusable item. For example, I can show you, um, I have here a reusable bag. So I, instead of going grocery and using plastic bags that we can't use them anymore for something that can exist. So we can uh, reuse, the, uh, take this bag and reuse them for other, um, I mean, more than once. And also for a cup of coffee, we can use a glass uh, but, um, cup instead of plastic cup or also the paper cup because the paper cup also there is uh, a percentage of plastic in it so we need to reduce our uh, plastic waste or let's say the plastic products that we're buying we need to believe in this idea uh, how to change uh, our future what we want the future how how we want the future and for our also next generation Yeah, so, very true. Uh, continue, yeah, you were saying? Yes. So well, I, what, what I want to say is also we want to schools, we give activities in schools to let also the next generation, the, the kids now, they are understanding how to regrowing and also how to be sustainable in their lifestyle. They're also telling their parents to stop using plastic and also to stop using other items that is harming the environment. Also, I have here, um, it's made of fabric and also bee wax. And um, I keep in it my nuts so people can use it instead of uh, the plastic bags and it's reusable and can be washed. Wow, uh, are these products for sale? Yes, they are, are these, available. Are these products for sale, Aisha? Yes, they are on, available. On your website? No, it's not on our website. Uh, we don't sell products, uh, but I bought them here from Qatar. Uh, they are available in many oh, stores okay. here. Actually, our page so is what, what an, uh, our page is an initiative. Uh, our page is a youth initiative. So we share awareness. We, we try as much as we can to spread this awareness so people can believe in this idea and they change their thoughts to have a sustainable uh, lifestyle. So it's to be Marshall, So you're actually trying to, you're trying to change mindsets of people from the, from the child. Yes, yes because Excellent. Uh, Great. To, be a, to be sustainable in life, it should be from from inside to believe in it and then we can do it we start from from ourselves and then we start from home and then we spread it to other people oh wow fantastic so, uh, so where do you where do you see uh, you know greener qatar what is your roadmap for greener qatar in the, like for example next 6 months next 1 year where do you see taking greener qatar uh, what we'll be continuing what we're doing is to spread this awareness and to let people to understand what we're doing. But I'm assuming that now here in Qatar, it's changing a lot. People are getting more aware about uh, what's going in our mother nature and how we should protect the mother nature. So I think maybe after six months or one year, um, people will be more involved in this. So we will not give like a lot of awareness because they are already aware. Yeah, yeah. I'm just getting a small interference. Is somebody's phone on? I'm getting an yep. interference with. Is, 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 no, okay, fine. That's fine. Yeah, we can we can continue with uh, with um, Aisha and a sustainability roadmap. How are you managing? I'm university. Can you repeat? Oh, yeah. Are you having a, there, is, there is a bit of a there is a bit of a there is a bit of a audio issue. Anyway, it's not an issue. We we will overcome any issue out here. We are on the virtual Big B meetup. Okay, Aisha, what is what is your uh, what is your, how do you manage school, your university, and greener Qatar? You're yeah. you're a young entrepreneur, you know, and. And I believe you also took part in my Istidama event last year at uh, at Barzan, and I met your family there, your sister and your mother. 
So you're you got a nice little family. There. How do you manage your time? And also explain to me how you're coping in the current situation. You know, because for me, I'm an outgoing guy. I like to be out every time, having a cup of tea or just you know moving around. So how are you coping at home? What are you doing apart from also with Greener Qatar? But apart from that, your university, your your daily life. How do you how what are you doing? Well, I'm providing my work uh, like. Uh, if it's related to greener, uh, sometimes I do the thing by myself. Sometimes I get back to my group and we discuss it. So I'm many, I'm trying to manage my time. Uh, and for example, now I'm having uh, the summer vacation, so I don't have classes. So I'm focusing on greener and I'm trying to learn more about it. And also, I want to mention that okay. I'm having a course now with uh, Harvard University according to climate action. Okay. I, I yeah. yeah. Pretty nice, you know. We're having a bit of an issue with the sound. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. 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 Uh, I shall Sometimes get back to you. Sometimes it's not very clear, but but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me move, let me let me go to Dr. Farhan, uh, and we'll come back to Aisha. I would like to know more about your recycling mantra, your dream sustainability project, and a little more about you. Let me talk. Let me touch base with my friend Farhan, who I know for who I've been troubling for the past three years, and now I'm going to trouble him. I'm going to trouble him a bit, little bit more. So, Dr. Farhan, uh, uh, Farhan to me, I, I have the liberty of calling him Farhan. You're welcome. So, yeah. <laughs> let me see. How, how are you, doctor? And give, give me, how are you coping with COVID? How are you? Uh, tell me your story. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very well. Um, I'm at home since now uh, two and a half months, I think. COVID uh, just catch us in middle of the excavation season. So we were actually at the field working and um, uh, trying to finalize some uh, excavation projects. And uh, then all the things started and it uh, gradually the life changed. And, and then we uh, were asked to move to home office. Now, uh, since two and a half months, I have home office and this is actually uh, going well. It is uh, not so easy to adapt, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, still we have all the, you know, uh, technological possibilities, thanks God, that we can, you know, do our uh, usual work from home. And uh, one has to say that uh, around us are so many people that who cannot be at home office, the delivery boys or the people in the healthcare and so on. And these are the people who are keeping our life going, actually. And we can yeah. be only yeah. grateful that, that we, we can we can stay at yeah. home. Yeah. You're, saying, you're saying that you are working from home. Yeah. Uh, have you found any? Have you found any fossils or anything at home? <laughs> yeah. How an archaeologist uh, can work, like, it, you know, right? This is the question. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have enough things to do uh, at the office. Actually, I would say uh, around uh, twenty percent of a uh, job of an archaeologist is in the field, and the rest of it is as actually at the desk. So uh, we have to, you know, analyze the uh, data that we have. We have to uh, complete the documentation that we started at the field. And then we have to write the report, of course, and uh, do publication and inform the public about it. Uh, like now I can maybe announce that in, in two days or no, in three days, we have also a lecture in, uh, with uh, Qatar Natural History Group. Uh, where we will um, uh, represent our uh, excavation uh, result from the half <laughs> half done excavation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I've been asked by a fellow uh, by, by a fellow podcaster, a good friend of mine, Steve. He's asking us to turn our volumes a bit lower. Then maybe we'll have a better volume because uh, our our audience cannot hear cannot hear us properly. 
So uh, cannot hear me or I mean, uh, I, uh, in general. No, I, we, I can hear you. When I show, when I show was online, we couldn't. Uh, there was a problem, but I think it's okay now. But uh, okay. if we, I show, you can just turn your volume a bit low, and then we will come back uh, to you after I finish with theory also. Just as a as a as a as a safety measure or as a measure. Uh, yeah, Doc, Dr. Farhan, I've been yeah. following you for three years now, you know, and I would, I mean, as a, as a wonderful person you are, uh, you although much. our first meeting was a bit difficult, uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm such a big fan, I'm such a big fan of yours. I would like to, um, you know, ask you, uh, can you give us more details? That I, I believe you're one of, a, for me, you are one of the three or four deep superstars, of course, with Jose <laughs> and with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Suraj. So tell me how how are you guys? Uh, you know, I, I like the way you guys go and clean all the heritage sites for me before I go and take yeah. photographs of them and then convert yeah. them into a calendar. So that's really nice. Well, I, Some of the places yeah. I went there before you. Yeah. So Some um, of the places I, I, I know that. Yes, of course, of course. This is not a, a very old history. This is quite recent, actually. Um, and I would not go that far to call myself a, one of the superstars of the of uh, Deep. Deep is a volunteer organization, Doha Environmental Actions Project, um, who is directed by uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Jose Sosedo, and he's doing this uh, very difficult and very time-consuming job all by himself and you know organizing all these cleanups uh, mostly during the weekends for the general public uh, but he is doing also cleanups and information um, events for schools for companies and so on during the week so it is actually a full-time job uh, which Jose is uh, uh, dedicating his entire time actually um it's it's amazing as no. i was i heard about it for the first time i was thinking wow uh, uh, it's yeah. it's amazing yeah. it's crazy you know well uh, he, yes tell me he put up uh, doc, sorry doctor uh, yeah. jose had put up a video some years or maybe last year he was on holiday in mexico or the states and he actually went and cleared somebody else's garbage as in there was some filth left on the roadside. He went and cleared cleared that. And for yeah. me, that is an amazing way, uh, way to show how you can help the en environment and also show yeah. people thought leadership. You know, yeah. exactly. so people are throwing their garbage. Yeah. You go and clean it up for them. They yeah. will feel so embarrassed. Yeah. That they'll never throw that again. So that's something and I want to applaud him. Yeah. Really. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so, of course, it's, yeah. I, I like the way what he's doing. So, like what you he's know, doing with the schools, you know, yeah, I, this I cannot, you know, uh, uh, I, I can tell you what I think uh, is uh, um, deep is for me and and um, they are doing so great job. This is a hands on thing because we are most of us are just talking about the environment and so on and what we can do what we cannot do and so on deep is doing something they go every i mean we go now i'm uh, also one part of uh, deep we go every friday and clean and we don't you know uh, complain or we we don't uh, uh, build big big concepts and so on we just do thing and this is a closed uh, event is just one hour and it is done and it is done continuously with this we are trying to be uh, uh, you know uh, uh, example for the rest of the uh, society of course how we came together was very interesting because um, uh, i mean i'm archaeologist and uh, we are caring about the heritage sites and archaeological sites of qatar and um, as I was uh, checking one of the events for weekend, um, I saw that um, Doha Environmental Action uh, Project was cleaning at Zubara Beach. And I was like, okay, how did they come in <laughs> or how they go in and uh, cleaning <laughs> the beach? And then I get in touch with, with Jose and, and then we spoke with each other. Of course, they were not inside the heritage site, but near to Zubara. So it was easier to call it El Zubara Beach. 
but then the idea was born that uh, we start an initiative between Qatar Museums and the Home Environmental Action uh, Project um, that we uh, clean beside the, their normal schedule also heritage sites because heritage sites are off limit areas. So you cannot just go in and do something. Mm -hmm. Most of them are, uh, uh, many of them are a fence, so you have to have an approval yeah. to go in or uh, you have to use the visitor uh, times to go in and so on. And uh, being off limit that area uh, and also being a fragile environment because it is a, a heritage area and you cannot just go in with the garbage uh, truck and, and collect everything and go out this might disturb many things um so uh, we yeah. hand pick plastic garbage from heritage sites and we do this now since one year it's, it is actually more or less exactly one year we do this and deep was doing this also before we start with the collaboration really uh, you know officially and uh, now we are very happy because we have um, uh, almost solved the uh, plastic pollution problem in heritage sites and the beach of heritage yeah. sites also inside the heritage sites. Yeah. Yeah. But doctor, you know, I have something to say. I mean, some people have told me this. Yeah. Uh, in, I noticed it too. You know, when people see that their garbage has been cleansed by somebody, they'll go and throw their garbage also. It, it works both ways, you know. So uh, uh, we all put signs up like, you know, this has, I mean, I, I, I call you all the deep cleaners of Qatar. And I, mm -hmm. D E A P, you know what I said? Mm -hmm. So, I, you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, there I should know. be a I, I use that whenever. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. The deep yeah, cleaners yeah, of Qatar yeah. have, have, please keep it clean, you know, because yeah. we can, we can, of course, I mean, I, when I say we, I'm a deep, uh, uh, I'm a deep, uh, uh, I'm a deep volunteer also. In 2017, I volunteered three times. I'm very proud of that. My friend, yeah. um, uh, Miss Somia Suraj, she's volunteered 110 times or something. So, oh, but I'm yes. happy with my yes. three right now. Yes. Of course. <laughs> yeah. This was when yeah. Jean, the French lady, was uh, managing it before Jose. Uh, yeah. I, I've been the, uh, I've been for the beach cleanup to uh, Jumail, to Wakra, and another place. I've been to three places yeah. with uh, Deep. Yeah. Uh, and I love what I what it's like a little family. And at the end of cleaning the beach, we get a little meal and we share our food. It's so exactly. uh, uh, it's like a thank yeah. it's like a Thanksgiving little meal, you know. The small it's really nice. Is, uh, discover Qatar with purpose. So it is not only an event to clean up the beaches, but also to uh, discover Qatar to see places that people are never been to. Uh, because uh, as we were speaking before, we've gone online, there are people in Qatar, they never been outside of Doha and they are since years here and they don't know <laughs> where Mail is, they don't know what Barzan Towers is, they don't know what Zubara is. And when you say Zubara, they know only maybe Zubara Fort, but nobody knows the Zubara archeological yeah. site. And this is the only and one first uh, world heritage site of yeah. Qatar. So actually everybody has True. to somehow know something about it. Uh, and and uh, this is a shame. And, and I think Deep is doing a very good job there to, you know, also to show people around what is in Qatar actually, which places are there, which yeah. natural wonders are there, which exactly. cultural wonders are there. Uh, and and uh, there is so much things we we see and and sometimes I post also in my social media, you know the uh, the uh, animals that we see, turtles we we rescue and and so on and so forth. So it is. I was just uh, going to say uh, that. Uh, can you share some of your pictures? You you you've taken some lovely pictures in the past couple of weeks or months. If you have any, yeah. if you can show them in a little later, I'm going to go. I'm going to catch a hold of theory, Doctor Theory. Now I call him Doctor T. Like Mr. T, Dr. T, let me speak to Dr. Theory. And uh, he, you know, Dr. Theory has been so silent these past six to eight months. Just two days ago or four days ago, I get to know that he is the chairman of the Qatar Natural History Group uh, that started, I think, that started in 1978. 1978. That would be the oldest organization. 
environment. I think that's the oldest environment group in Qatar, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. It's, yes. it's uh, Doctor? the one that uh, two years ago we celebrated our 40th anniversary. Okay. And uh, it's an amazing group, a volunteer yeah. group. And uh, it gathers people who have a passion, a purpose to discover the nature, the culture, the history, not only of Qatar, but about also the, the, the region. So it's quite uh, exciting to be part of uh, Qatar Natural History Group. I've been in Qatar for the past six years, and this group had, uh, has uh, allowed me to really discover, the, uh, discover Qatar and some, par some parts of Qatar, hidden places, hidden uh, treasures of Qatar. And it's a good way to, uh, to discover the nature, to go out in the desert. How we do that, it's, so we, we organize monthly talks. So every month we invite an expert. It could be a an ecologist, a naturalist, a biologist, uh, or an archaeologist, or an historian. And then uh, also uh, every month we organize some rambles. So basically we go out in the field with the, the, an expert and uh, we discover some places in Qatar, some uh, animals, some plants, some uh, history, some um, places. And also we have yeah. a, a program called Citizen Science Program, where we basically invite people to share their observations. You can be in the desert or you can be at home, you see some animals, you don't know what it is, you take a picture and you share that uh, that picture, and it's a good way to, to discover some animals, some plants of Qatar. We have a, we don't realize that because we think that we are in a desert and the desert is supposed to be deserts. And actually, <laughs> the Qatar has an incredible biodiversity. There are more than 1,900 plants and animals, different plants and animals in Qatar. There are more wow. than 300 species. Can you repeat that, Doctor? Can you repeat that, please? Can you repeat that? Nineteen hundreds yep, species oh, of plants and animals in Qatar. Uh, more than three hundred uh, species of birds, and uh, Qatar is an incredible place to um, do some bird watching, especially during the migration seasons, during the spring and during the fall, yeah. since you have so many birds uh, um, passing through Qatar. There are more than 300 species of plants, and those are also incredible to, to observe, to study, because they have such an uh, incredible strategy to adapt to the deserts, whether, whether it's uh, temperature or the lack of water. So uh, it's, it's quite interesting to, to be in Qatar and to discover the environment of Qatar and uh, through our activities that we are trying to do. Wow, great. You know, I, I have first-hand knowledge of the birds of Qatar because in 2013, I created a birding calendar. I went up to the, uh, you know, the water, uh, the water sewage site uh, up uh, next to, um, on the on the border, you know, on the Salva Road. I've been to mm -hmm. the, I can't remember the name of the place, Irkaya. but... Irkaya, yeah. Yes, Irkaya, Ir Ir Irkaya, yes, yes, exactly. And I've got uh, different bird species. Uh, and I photographed them from the Hoopi Lark to, to uh, you know, the, um, I can't remember the birds now, but I've got Godwits, I've got uh, a couple of other birds. And uh, I, I don't have a calendar right now, but I will send you the pictures of that calendar because I want to reproduce that calendar maybe in 2020, 2021 it's, it's or 22. It's a great way to raise awareness about those. Uh, that, that exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Coming back to the calendar, I think last year when we met at uh, when we met at uh, the uh, Mushareb Museum, you quietly mentioned to me saying, "Bosco, let's collaborate on something in the future for Qatar National History Group." You know, mm -hmm. and uh, if I if I knew you were talking on behalf, of, yes, and if I knew you were talking on behalf of Qatar Qatar National History Just Group, at the time, it, right? <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> I would have pushed it a bit more and said, "Okay, let's do that." So I have the time now. I will go I'm going to work on this and I'm going to send you some samples and we're going to, we have to make this calendar for the Qatar Natural History Group, yeah? 
and all my viewers out there if you'd like to contribute towards this calendar hit me up or dr theory but more importantly i'd like you all to join them on their rambles i like the word rambles it's a lovely word you know i think it's a very colloquial british word also to use so uh, so the frenchman is using that that's fantastic <laughs> and i'd like to come i'd like to join you guys on a ramble i definitely get my little hard hat on and come along with you uh theory uh, what more can you tell me um, can you tell me more about theory lesales the man the person behind because all i know of you for the past 6 to 8 months is working for oryx radio as a sustainability sustainability guy uh, you do a lot of yeah. sustainable stories uh, and you interview environments environments are yeah which is fantastic environmental producer yeah, yeah. so what do what do you want yeah. to know more? give me more I want to, yeah I want to know more about you how are you coping with covid I remember talking to you a month ago and I said how are you coping with covid you're saying hey I'm enjoying myself I'm happy with my family enjoying my time of course if you have a family like yours the two little kids who I love your boys amazing kids they'll always be rem remembered by me yeah I'm, I'm, uh, I'm and, uh, I would like to know how you I'm lucky it's true that I can, work from, I, can, I can work from from home so I can spend time with the family and I can really enjoy that and it's you know the pace has been slower so you can really enjoy that time with the family not running around with the activities and the school activities after school activities and stuff like yeah. that. that that can be appreciable uh, but uh, it's been also quite frustrating because we had to stop all our activities with Qatar Natural History Group so no more uh, rumbles and i really enjoy going out we had lots of uh, plans for instance to go uh, for camping trips and stuff like that we were really looking forward to that and everything has stopped but um, we were still able to go out in the desert as a family not not as a group because uh, we have to respect the social uh, distancing but as a family we could go out and walk in the desert and that's really help the mental uh, to keep a mental uh, health uh, to go out in the desert and make some observation of birds and uh, just to be out in the, in the nature it's it's a very important i think it's very important to reconnect uh, with nature especially during that time uh, that's a, as a reminder also the theme for the world environment uh, day this year was uh, it's time for nature and it's a very good uh, theme for this year and for this time with the pandemic because actually we have to exactly. face our three exactly. crises yeah. we have to face the covid crisis which is an emergency right now but we also have to face the climate crisis and also the biodiversity crisis so we have uh, many challenges on our plate mm -hmm. no very true and and all these challenges make us stronger people and we will overcome these challenges you know uh, actually the the covid situation has given uh, mother earth a bit of a break but i also see with giving them a break when giving giving mother earth a break we also see people you know using uh, plastic in a bad way again and i was discussing that with aisha a couple of weeks ago so i wanted to create an awareness campaign where people actually make sure they throw their plastic uh, they are they are they are not yeah the plastic uh, you know they use the the gloves plastic gloves while they're going to shop at at, at uh, uh, groceries and also when they're wearing the, their mask the daily mask that they throw out i have seen so many masks on the road side even when i'm driving around in my area in matar kadim i see they flying around them flying around so i wanted to create an awareness campaign i wanted to also talk about it here and that's why i brought that's another reason i brought you all uh, on this uh, platform because I want to collaborate with all three of y'all, and uh, who can who can forget uh, St uh, Jose and uh, another person actually is Varda from Wahab Food Heroes. I want to do a mega sustainability project. My next the Big B meetup, the physical one that I'll have, not virtual, is going to be on sustainability, and I would like to have that as soon as we finish phase four of this quarantine. Hopefully, inshallah, in October or November. So the weather is really nice. Uh, zubara is, will be nice and clean for us by deep hopefully or we can do it together we can do it together we can have a ramble with the natural history group and the go green uh, princess uh, and take the deep cleaners to uh, to uh, what do you call it uh, the, the unesco site 
and have a mega sustainable event there. I'd like Dr. Farhan to take this up to Her Excellency Sheikha Mayasa, and we can talk this. What do you say? Well, um, okay, you said it. <laughs> Fine. Uh, uh, just a second. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we, we can. We can. Uh, this is a start of an idea, and then we can follow it. Okay. Let's do a follow up and see what what is Absolutely. possible. Yeah. Doctor knows me. Doctor knows me as a little ferret. I, I'm a little badger. I keep badgering him all the time till he gives in. He says, "Okay, Bosco, I'm fed up of you. Let's do it." Yes. Okay. Fine. That's me. That's little. That's the little Rottweiler in me. You know. So coming back to Aisha. Aisha is smiling at us. She would like to say a few more things. Aisha, you know, I've been I've been collating a list of uh, sustainable artists in Qatar. Now I've I've known Somia Surat, Swapna Nambudari. Uh, Paula, uh, Masmudi, uh, Patrick Rosario, and Batul. These are artists I know. Some of them have taken part in in, in uh, one of the Big B meetups that I've organized in Sheikh Faisal's museum, where I had uh, uh, sustainable art along with Flower Eat Spring, Dr. Saiful Hajri's project, with us, and it was really nice. So I want to know, actually, not only to you, Aisha, but also to Farhan and Theory. Do you all know of any more sustainable artists, not necessarily in Qatar, even outside Qatar? Maybe we. I mean, I would like to even look at the possibility of getting an international sustainable artist on a project to Qatar, and we all collaborate with him or her, and you know, do something of at a world stage. What do you think, Doctor? What do you think, Aisha? And what do you think, Doctor T? That's a great idea, and uh, I don't know any sustainable artist personally, but I, personally I was very impressed with some artwork that was done on some beaches with some uh, plastic bottles where the artist was uh, uh, with uh, making some sculptures of the animals, uh, the sea animals, marine life uh, on the beaches with plastic bottles and that was quite impressive. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, there was some turtles, and so you can imagine that here that can also be a, that could be a way to 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 raise awareness yes. on the beaches with the turtles, dugongs, for instance, on, on the beaches made with yeah. plastic bottles. Yes. Exactly, I've seen something similar in my hometown in Goa. Also, they've done a big fish, uh, and they made it with plastic, and people are so they made dustbins with plastic and made them look very beautiful. So they're beautified dustbin. So people will actually go to the dustbin and throw something because it's beautiful. It looks nice. It's a work of art, you know? At the same yeah. time, you're using it as a dustbin. It's an art and piece. I'd like and to also in Lebanon and Oman is doing the same what you mentioned. Who's that? Also uh, Lebanon and you... Oman. Mm -hmm. Yes, can you hear me? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you say that? Yeah. yeah, I yeah. said also Lebanon and Oman is doing uh, the same thing. They're creating like animals and also they're creating um, uh, like other shapes that let people to be more inspired and uh, exciting to throw the garbage. Okay, wow, fantastic. That's nice. So we can, we don't have to follow anybody's footsteps. We can have our own we can have our own project and start off, you know, in Qatar. I'm sure we are ready for that. Uh, but it's all about collaboration and all communities coming together. Yeah, exactly. That's what I feel we should do, you know. Uh, I have a couple of, a few questions actually for any of you all that you can answer. Uh, can you name a, a, your favorite sustainable project? Maybe Doha in Qatar or worldwide, it can be any country. Have you, when, like, you know, your travels or when you were a kid or when you were, you know, growing up? What is, have you seen any sustainable, what's your, what, what would a sustainable project or artwork? Do you name, can you name any uh, from your travels? I don't see any specific project, but I have to say that uh, I've been in Qatar since for the past six years and I've been impressed with the incredible work that is being done in terms of sustainability, in terms of uh, raising awareness, whether through a community organization, for instance, it's great to hear from uh, Aisha and to see the work, the work's done by Deep Qatar, but also the government 
uh, getting involved in the, for instance, in the preparation for the World Cup, putting sustainability in practice uh, for the stadium and for the parks. And you also have uh, many uh, ambitious projects, for instance, uh, uh, in terms of uh, tree planting. That, that's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, true. And I think that our international yeah. are setting a very good example for the World Cup in, uh, in many areas. So uh, if that could be our, our, our best sustainability project, actually, it's a World Cup. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, very true. Uh, Dr. Farhan, I, you know, I've seen, uh, I've been sneaking up on your pictures and I've seen a little cat. Can you give us a little story about that cat you have? What, what is that all about? <laughs> Now she is hiding. Uh, it's a rescue cat. Uh, uh, her name is Layla. Oh, wow. uh, I adopted her Lyla. just a month ago. <laughs> yeah. And this is uh, what we can also do. You know, there are so many animals now uh, uh, outside and, and it is getting hot and they need food, they need water. And uh, I know that actually this is very sad, but many people also dump their um, uh, house cats and house dogs or other animals. I heard about turtles, I heard about uh, mm. birds and so on, which is terrible. I mean, this, uh, this animal cannot make it in this kind of environment. And uh, this is also one problem that we have here in Qatar, actually. Um, uh, uh, Ghanem uh, was uh, speaking about this a uh, couple of weeks ago in his one of his articles about the uh, animal cell in, in Sukwakif, this area, uh, how, how yeah. terrible is it actually. I mean, if you want to have a, a house cat or house dog, adopt. And there are uh, yeah. amazingly dedicated people running this uh, shelters in Qatar. There are two I know, but there are possibly more. And uh, uh, there are veterinaries who, uh, who are um, uh, hosting cats and dogs. So you can adapt from anywhere. So don't buy animals, adapt. So uh, this would be my yeah. message. And now I have uh, a cat and she's wonderful and she's keeping me also busy. And this is also uh, nice to have, a, you know, to have a friend with me <laughs> here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very good. You know, you know, uh, you know, Janice, the lady who spoke at my previous, my last at event at Altitude, she's left for Canada for good, but yeah. she's got a lovely story to tell. She's taking all her seven pets with her, seven pets, a couple of dogs and around four or five cats. She's taken all of them with her to Canada. And I want to really applaud her for that. I'm so happy that she's done that. God bless her. So that's an example of people also, there are people who dump the animals, but there are also people who take them with them home, you know. So that shows a I lot mean, of character, you know. You could also about, not leave your children behind, right? So your pets are your children. You have to care about them. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. Actually, I think when I was a kid, once uh, I'm not sure, but I was throwing a tantrum, and my dad uh, told me, "You know what? I'm going to leave you behind." And then I, the tantrum just left. You know. So there were no tantrums. He said, "I'm going to leave you behind," and I'm like, uh, oh, "Okay, dad, uh, I'm coming with you home, or <laughs> whatever." You know. So that's another good thing. Talking of uh, actually not tantrums. Talking of um, sustainability. Coming back to the chapter. You know, carbon footprint, and it's a very basic word. How do you explain, how would you explain carbon footprint to somebody who's just thrown garbage on the road, who's just thrown, who's just thrown his half-eaten meal in the dustbin and his plastic bag is just, okay, he's carrying his plastic bag. How do you explain carbon footprint to that person? In, in like, you got like, you either want to beat him up or you want to tell him, Habibi or buddy, you know, we don't have this earth forever, we have to reduce, replenish, reuse, and not abuse the earth. So, okay. I mean, I can go on and on, but Dr. Farhan, should I come back? Should I, uh, you want to think about it and give me a, what, uh, how do you explain carbon footprint to somebody? You no, know, I, I will just, uh, you know, uh, try to answer it a little bit 
with my story, maybe I, I was born in Turkey and uh, I grew up there, of course, and um, I went then to Germany as I was 20 years old. And garbage management at that time in Turkey was just normal garbage management that you would, you know, uh, collect all the garbage and so on. But we had also problems. I mean, there were garbage uh, fields everywhere and so on when it, uh, it was busy time and so on. When I was in Germany, uh, everything was totally different. I mean, this was the time, uh, beginning of the 1990s, uh, the Germany uh, started to separate their garbage in different beams. And it was not easy for me at the beginning to adapt to this system, you know, to, to separate everything and so on. But uh, this is actually a perfect thing because you can recycle things and you can use material for other uh, um, objects. And, and, and uh, with this, you don't, you know, look for new resources. You use the resources which are already there, repurpose them. And now coming to Qatar seven years ago, it uh, changed again uh, the garbage management in my life. Um, so I didn't have to care about it at the beginning because I was living in hotels. But since I have my own household, um, I see that everything going to the same garbage chute. Yeah. What I do personally, I train myself still and still separating my garbage in different bags. But of course, they are going into the same garbage chute. But if you in, uh, are interested, you can still find in Qatar possibilities now, as Thierry was saying, there is a development. So you can find places where plastic is collected. You can find places where batteries are uh, collected. Maybe Thierry can oh, yeah. also speak about the battery, yeah. Yeah. which uh, exactly. we actually, you know, taking with us to our home country. When I was going to Germany, I was taking my bags with me and recycle them there. So, oh, wow, that's um, fantastic. Speaking about the carbon footprint, and this is now during my story, during my history, it changed, of course, because I was in Germany where I was living in a very quiet life uh, i had i didn't have a car i was using a bicycle i was using train to go to the work and i was walking to everywhere i never used plastic bags because we had the tote bags and uh, when i was in qatar the first thing i saw was that every item was packed in a different plastic bag which made me crazy from the very beginning actually and i was always saying you know put them in one plastic bag and most of the time I have my tote bag with me and, and I don't need plastic bags. And, and when I say I don't need plastic bags, wow. they have things like this and they don't understand or they didn't understand seven years ago. Now it is more and more people are asking for this, that everything is, is in one plastic bag. But now, again, everything is changing because of the COVID. So uh, people are yeah. now focused on you know uh, pack things and and maybe these are not contaminated and so on we are using gloves we are using face masks and so on and these things are as you say uh, they are on the street they are not uh, properly you know uh, put in 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 garbage bins oh. and so on dispose and yeah. here you have one face mask and these things are lying around everywhere and please, yeah. people, please, please. This is the least thing that you can do for the environment to, to put those things in garbage beam properly. And then, yeah. you know... Uh, uh, no, can you show me... Can you show, me, can you show that... Uh, the, the, can you show me the uh, gloves again? Because those are, yeah. those are better gloves. You know what gloves we have? These are nice. These are rubberish, right? Yeah. And and they of rubber rubbery and they rubber material. No, these are latex, I think. Yeah, latex. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but the ones we get at the at the supermarkets, they are of plastic and they are very flimsy. So I would suggest people getting these latex. Yeah, I would suggest these the people getting their own latex gloves, and using them, and reusing them. 
instead of using the flimsy plastic ones that the, the shops give us because they fly around they cannot stay in the dustbin they fly around with the breeze and now with the shamal in in this month it's going to be all over the place don't you agree aisha yeah and talking of collecting your own sustainable garbage i've been collecting these bottles of baladna milk bottles because i drink fresh milk with my tea i'm a tea person so i've been collecting this for sapna nambudari since i met her at my event in in uh, october 26 uh on my istidama event in barzan i've been collecting these bottles because she does lovely lovely artwork with plastic bottles so guys collect your plastic bottles and if you would like to deliver them to swapna she's going to create lovely artwork and maybe she might uh, donate some to you yeah so coming to uh, i would like to go back yes, to the footprint con- concept yeah. um yes, it's please. a way it's a way to basically measure or assess or um, the impact of the human activities on this planet and uh, it's uh, measured uh, using the total uh, carbon emissions that we release into uh, the atmosphere but the carbon footprint also is uh, also linked to the concept that we are actually overusing the resources of the planet and uh, we should really pay attention to the, to that concept we are really overusing we are not re- on a sustainable uh, path right now we are overusing yeah. the resources of the planet and uh, that's right. why we yeah, exactly pay attention to the um, to those crises biodiversity crisis climate change crisis because that's the future of the planet that's the future of our children very clear. Dr. Ter- Dr. T, can you show me uh, those batteries you were talking about earlier? I would like to see that that story ah. about your batteries. That's a very that's a very uh, nice story. Earlier, I was saying that there were some uh, very good progress made in Qatar uh, for the past few years, and then recently, as uh, Dr. Ferran also mentioned, I used to collect those and travel back to France and dump them in France because I know they are recycled in France. And I used to do the same thing also with the medicines. And, you know, expired medicine, you should never wow. dispose of them in the regular uh, garbage or the domestic waste. So uh, can, now... Uh, can, uh, doctor, can you repeat that again? I'm sorry? Can you say that again? Can you say that again about the medicine? These are such gems. These are such, these are such simple, these are such simple um, sentences from you. but they are such gems they need to be repeated so that people you and me i don't i mean i don't recycle yeah, my batteries should, i, I you mean should never, you, should, you should never dispose of expired medicine in the regular uh, garbage you shouldn't be uh, put with the uh, domestic waste because, uh, not even and some some people also throw them into the, the toilets that's even worse and uh, so you should never do that it should be recycled so um as i said earlier uh, i would travel back to france w- with my uh, expired medicine and give them to pharmacies there but i learned that here in qatar if you go back if you uh, if you go to the hamad pharmacy the central pharmacy or to the pharmacies at the health centers they can take them back and they, so that they can be properly disposed of so uh, that's i think wow. it's important then regarding the the batteries uh, recently qatar has started uh, collecting the used batteries they have some uh, bins at uh, at almiras in some almiras uh, supermarkets so when you go shopping you can bring those used batteries and they will be uh, taken care of also ikea has i think uh, battery um, Yes, uh, that started earlier they had stopped and then they have started again so that's also a very good news this is lovely this is excellent it's really nice i'm going to start doing this see dr theory dr t if i may call you uh, i mean this is very informative already people are talking about it on our chat here 
Wow, Aisha, don't you think we, we should take this further with some uh, more awareness campaigns with, with Dr. Theory and Dr. Farhan on, on, these, on the topics of recycling batteries, recycling your medicine? That's amazing, isn't it? We're just talking about plastic, but there's so much of other things that we can recycle, you know? Even hand-me-down clothes. I mean, you know, when we were kids, uh, since you're, if you're a big family, you, you know, people used to hand kids, they are, they are, they are, the older kids used to give the younger kids uh, clothes since they're, they're growing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's fantastic. Guys, uh, no, uh, we don't have much time here. We're getting done. But I would like to have you guys give your message to the public on World Environment Day, because World, as Aisha said in her speech, in, in our little cameo there on our video, every day should be World Environment Day. And we learn so much from, from each one of us. I've learned, I've learned so much from Dr. Farhan and Dr. Theory and Aisha. Actually, they're intimidating me now because I have to say Dr. Theory and Dr. Farhan. I was so used to saying Farhan and Theory. Now it's a bit intimidating. Uh, Aisha is fine. She's a sweetheart. I, I just would like you all to give one message to every, you all have given a lot of messages, but just if it's one line and you meet a littering, littering person in the elevator, it's not your elevator pitch, but it's your elevator punch to that person and telling him, guys, so can you give me your one minute or one or 20 seconds or I don't know, give me your message to the pub, to our viewers. Let's start with uh, the, uh, the green princess, Aisha. What, what, what is well, your one uh, message to the public here? Again, I want to say that let's uh, keep uh, World Environment Day every day. It should be in our lifestyle. Uh, we don't like do an action only to celebrate for one day or there's a, a campaign or an initiative. No, we try our as much as we can to believe in the idea and to change our habits and to live every day and environmental day. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Aisha. Uh, Theory, can can you can you give me um, your message, please? I think it's time for nature. I think this COVID uh, crisis has shown us that when we neglect nature, when we uh, go after some places that we shouldn't. <laughs> shouldn't go to, we, nature come back and bite us. So really we need to, to pay attention to nature, to reconnect to nature, to learn more about our environment, to teach our children about the environment. Why is it so important to care about the environment? So it's time to reconnect with nature. Yeah. Now, is that, is that your message coming in with, the, with your, as a chairman of Qatar Natural History Group or as theory, the, the sustainable, person or you you have another message one person, <laughs> one person. okay i'm just joining you and my, <laughs> yeah and dr farhan my favorite the man who's shown uh, who's taken me around qatar in the country i've lived for nearly 40 years he told me the the sasia carvings the I mean, some of the places i know okay but the, you taught me so much about nature and about the heritage in qatar can you teach us a little more uh, and give us a, your your views on the environment and your message or message for us? Well, there is not much left for me to say. Uh, this, there is so much to see in Qatar. There is so much to know and so much to experience. So just go and experience and see and understand and learn. And while you are doing this, keep Qatar clean. <laughs> Thank you so much. Guys, before you all leave, my message, I have a message from you all to the public. Uh, people, please volunteer and join Dr. Farhan with Jose and the, and the deep in volunteers to clean up Qatar. Please join Dr. Theory and the Qatar Natural History Group on their rambles across Qatar and its beautiful places. And please join and support Aisha in her endeavor to greener Qatar. And also join Wahab Food Heroes. We, we don't recycle food, but we save food and we share food. Yeah. And I'd like to show you something, uh, an artist by the name of Swapna Nambudari. Sorry, 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 Somia. Somia, Somia Suraj, she's a deep volunteer and she's done this 
at the decoupage artwork uh, for uh, our event, the Big B Meetup event on Istadama, which we had at Barzan. And what I did was even the invitations were made on recycled paper with uh, paper cut. Yeah. So think sustainable and be sustainable. Upcycle. Actually, talk about, sorry, before you guys leave, I, 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 didn't, I didn't venture into this. We should even think about upcycling, yeah? So we should, uh, we should even look at an upcycling project. So before I say goodbye to everybody and to you guys, I'd like to mention that we will be having the next Big B Meetup, the physical Big B Meetup, will be on Istadama, on sustainability. And I'd like to invite Dr. Theory as a new speaker. Dr. Farhan and Aisha have spoken, but I will be collaborating with them. And I'm going to put Dr. Theory on the spot. And he's going to talk to us a lot about Qatar Natural History Group and about those batteries again, you know. So thank you once again, guys, for your yeah. time. Thank uh, you. And thank you. Yeah. Messi, Messi, Boku, Messi. You know, you know, Theory, we would have been in France next year, next month. Huh? By the way, Theory, happy uh, year of the culture of Qatar and France. Yeah. Yes, I, thank you. I, thank I, you. I, I might bring you back yeah. on Bastille Day. You might have to spare me five minutes because on Bastille Day, on the 14th of July, I might pull you again. But this time, maybe with the full family to say, Bonjour, Qatar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for Thank you. tuning in. And uh, please recycle, reduce, and reuse. Thank you.